Audio Kinetic was created in the year 2000. Um, we released our first commercial version of WISE in 2006. Uh, we have our headquarters based in Montreal, Canada. Um, we are 25 employees, and we also have a Japan subsidiary, Audio Kinetic KK, uh, which is based out of Tokyo. So what we do is we, we create a, a product called WISE, uh, which is an authoring tool and platform SDK, and we currently support uh, 15 platforms, 15 different gaming platforms. Uh, we also um, distribute audio effect plugins for ones that we create and also for our third-party partners. And we also provide customer support, and we actually do that in Korean as well as Japanese. Uh, we are the industry leader in uh, audio middleware. We have over 300 customers uh, worldwide, uh, from ind small indies to AAA large uh, console games. And we also have um, deals with um, publishers and developers uh, worldwide. Here's a quick look at some of our, our top uh, AAA games that use WISE. Second page. And we also have um, mobile games using WISE as well. So this is um, something, a market that we're very interested in growing and getting um, smaller and mobile game developers on board with using WISE as well. So um, the first area we'll look at is what are the components of WISE? What is WISE comprised of? Well, the first portion is the authoring tool, which runs on Windows and Mac. This is the tool that the sound designers actually use to author their content for, for the games. We also provide audio effects. So as I mentioned, we have a wide range of our own and third-party plugins. And we also, in our source code, provide an SDK. So if you need to, you can actually build your own audio effects. We also provide source effects. These are plugins that make or generate sounds. Um, we have a line of products, SoundSeed and Synth1, which create sounds. And um, again, the SDK is available if you want to build your own source plugins as well. And the other uh, important element for the developers in the room is the runtime portion, which is the sound engine, um, which we have source code available for certain license types. So, for those of you who are not familiar with WISE, um, the main benefits of using the tool uh, are really broken down like this. The first one is the, the feature set is very comprehensive, and it's very rich, and it allows you to create and manage all aspects of audio for your game. The workflow uh, has been designed uh, for the sound designers, so the tool works in such a way where sound designers can actually take the authoring tool um, build things, try things, test things uh, within the authoring tool and then deploy it to the game. So this allows designers to try ideas and prototype um, without having to use a programmer or even a game in, in some cases. Um, our product is extremely stable. Uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, optimizing for our various platforms, so this allows you to get up and running quickly and um, from a maintenance perspective, it's, it's very easy to take new versions. Things are very stable uh, when we release products or different versions of our products. Um, we also have a very good support system. Uh, we provide also documentation and a wide range of tutorial videos and samples to help you uh, learn WISE and get up and running as fast as possible. So. Um, as I mentioned, the WISE authoring tool is, is very comprehensive, very feature-rich. There are a lot of functionality that are, that, that are available in the tool. Um, I'll show you a little bit of it, but um, really, um, if you have more questions or if there's something on this list that you'd like to see in greater detail, um, please come see us. We're, we're in the expo hall just around the corner, where I'd be more than, it'd be my pleasure to show you um, in more detail anything in this list. So basically, I'll just go through it quickly. Uh, we provide a wide range of audio properties and behaviors using different hierarchies and different type of container objects. Um, the product is multi-platform, so you can edit and, and deploy to multiple platforms from a single WISE project. So you author once, 
and then deploy to your, your various platforms. Uh, for larger teams that are using, um, have multiple people working on it, we do have SVN or per force support that allows you to check in and check out um, various elements of the projects for workgroup support. Uh, a lot of dynamic mixing features that allow the, the engine to, to automatically mix for you, dynamic control of voices, etc., and uh, high dynamic range audio as well for more advanced use of, of extended dynamic range. Um, automatic voice system, as I mentioned quickly, um, the ability to control voices and how they play is part of our voice management system. Um, we all allow you to insert audio effects uh, pretty much everywhere in the pipeline, where, whether you're creating sound objects or mix buses, um, you can insert effects on those, on those areas. And we have a wide range of synthesis tools available as well. Our product is multi-language, so you can create all of your language content uh, directly from WISE. Interactive music, which is one of our biggest selling points, uh, allows composers to create music for their games and uh, define transitions for how the music uh, seamlessly trans transitions from one area to another. Simulation tool that allows you to uh, test ideas, try out different things from within the authoring tool. And probably the most important is the profiling and troubleshooting areas where um, you can actually remotely connect over TCP IP to the game and um, collect information from the running game and also control parameters in real time as well. So it's a bi-directional communication. And the last two which I've written here are some of our new features which we announced uh, at GDC a few weeks ago. Um, the support for including MIDI files in the interactive music section. We've also created a two, um, a two oscillator synthesizer to create some rudimentary sounds. And also we've added the support of external, control, external controllers to control um, different points of Y. So the mixing, um, uh, parameters, things like that. So support for MIDI uh, and Mackie Control Pro as well. So the tool works with, uh, in conjunction with the, with the media creation tools that you're already using. So if you're using um, Pro Tools or um, Nuendo or anything like that, the workflow here is you create your content, you import those into Wise to create audio objects, and then from here, uh, you'll set behaviors and properties within the tool. Um, you'll create hierarchies of audio as well. Uh, you insert audio effects. You assign objects to different uh, mixer routing if you want to use that. And then for the runtime, um, to make all this happen in game, you create an event. Uh, the event is triggered by code. And then you also trigger things like real-time parameters, uh, state changes, switches, and so on. And then all of this can be simulated and tested um, before and after the game has been up and running. Excuse me. So let's take a quick look at um, the workflow and how this is done in WISE. So this example uses a, uh, a minigun, and the sound designer's job is to create sounds for the actual bullets, um, the barrel that turns, and different shells as they fall on the ground for different materials, so wood, metal, water, and so on. Um, the programmer's job is actually much simpler. All, all the programmer needs to do is start firing the gun and stop firing the gun. Everything else is taken care of by the sound designer. So if we take a quick look and see how this is built. So this is the authoring tool running on Windows. So this is my hierarchy that I've created um, where I've used different types of objects. So here you can see a different mixture of uh, different types of objects here. So the first one is the barrel sound, which, has, which is comprised of a start sound, stop sound, oh, that's strange. Not much sure what's going on over on the left side of the screen. I think there's a technical problem with the projector or something. Here we go. Thank you. Um, the fire sounds 
These are just basic bullets, which are dropped into a random container, which allows me to randomly select one of those sounds. The, the shells are actually contained within um, a switch container, which allows me to define different sounds for concrete, gravel, water, and wood. If we look at... Um, so that's pretty, much, that's pretty much the sounds that I have for my, for my barrel gun. Um, we're going to go to the, my mixer layout here. So this is my mixer layout where I can access the different elements and also trigger different events. So the events that I've created here are, are simply play these various objects that I've created. And the stop minigun is actually the same type of thing where I, I execute an action, in this case stop or break for the looping sounds and I, have, I assign the objects that will, be, that will be stopped. So if I trigger the play... Here in the view, I can also solo and mute these different elements so you can hear what's going on. So we have the barrel sound, the fire sound, and then my favorite is the bullet sound. So here we can actually simulate a state change here. So now we're on gravel, metal, and water. So I'll trigger the stop event. So I didn't actually play... Did I play the stop sound for you guys? Yeah, okay. So that gives you an idea of the interaction between what the sound designer does and the abstraction seen um, by the programmer. And once this event has actually been created in the game, the play minigun, uh, the sound designer can come back and make changes to this without having to go back and reiterate through the programmer, you know, make these changes. That's something the sound designer can do directly. Another quick example is my uh, crowd example. So the sound designer's job here is to, uh, to create crowd sounds. It's pretty simple. And also to attach something called a real-time parameter which the game itself will feed to the sound engine. So in this case, the game design uh, has defined that as the, um, as the players approach the goal, the crowd becomes more intense. So they become very excited. As they move away, they become less excited. So what the, what the programmer does in this case is starts the crowd, controls that intensity parameter, and stops the crowd. So let's just go to our crowd. So this is using a different type of container. This is using something called the blend container, which is basically a multi-track container. So here you can see that I have my excitement parameter, which has a range of, of 0 to 100. So on this axis, that's what you see. So as this parameter changes, it'll determine which element is being played or heard uh, in the container. So I'll play it. So a pretty simple example, but uh, powerful nonetheless. And um, that parameter that, that we heard that you saw me moving is what the programmer will actually control from whatever, whether it's from physics or from the AI or anything else in the game. So again, uh, the sound designer can build these elements, uh, test them, and then when the game is connected, uh, actually go and you know, make any, any changes necessary to any of these parameters. So again, you're working ahead of time and you're saving time and getting things up and running early. Um, we're going to take a quick look at interactive music now. Um, so this is a little bit different. The, 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 the composer's job here is to define and create music for um, different elements of the game. So gameplay logic, you know, in this case, I have an introduction, I have different stages, the player can die, and so on. So I've written music for those individual pieces. And then the second part, probably the most important part, is the ability to define transitions, which determine how you leave one playing instance into another one. So you define rules for how all that works. You can also can use tools that help you match cases where you're using different tempos or different key signatures. So Transitions that may or may not be natural, you have the ability to define transition segments which can help 
bridge that and make that sound more natural. Uh, again, this is something the composer can create within the tool. This can all be tested, and then when it's executed at runtime in the game, uh, it's going to sound exactly the same every time, and the composer is the one who determines how these transitions occur. So you don't have to sit with a programmer and say, okay, when this happens, do this, when this happens, do that. Um, this is really something that is done um, by the designers themselves. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go and, and quickly listen to the different pieces that I have created for the puzzle game. So just to give you an idea of what's happening, so there's intro music. A couple of different stages. Victory music. Death music. And then where it gets interesting is there's a whole bunch of different transition type of music that's been created. So in the case of when I, whenever I die, I play a transition to death piece. I'll play you a few more examples of transitions from different states. So once I've designed and created all these different musical elements, um, sound designer's job at this point then is to define and map um, how these elements are going to be transitioned, or what happens when, there's, when I transition from one to another. So here in my transition tab, you can see that I've defined a whole different range of different transitions. So what a transition is, let's find one here. One to two is an interesting one. Here we go. So I can define how I leave the content that's currently playing. So I specify the next beat with a fade out. And then the, at the destination, basically just start it right away. But the power of the, of the interactive music in Wise allows me to specify a transition piece. So this is where you can really start having fun and make things sound natural. So let's, uh, let's fire up the simulation tool here. And go and listen and see what's happening in the interactive music. So we'll start off with the intro music. So what you're seeing here is the profile tool, which allows me to visualize all of the events and performance monitoring of the system. So right now I'm profiling locally uh, on, on this laptop. If I was connecting to a game, uh, you, I would use TCP IP and I would see different machines that are available on my network. So what you're seeing then is that the intro music that's playing right now. So now we've actually entered the random uh, stage zero. So I can double click on this. Whoops, I'm sorry. Stop my music. So you have the ability to see exactly what the engine is playing at this time. Just pause that for a second. You can also view uh, the DSP performance of plugins. Um, streaming devices, you really have uh, memory allocation, so anything that is going to cause you grief, um, the profiler will definitely be there to show you um, what's happening as far as performance is concerned. So let's, let's simulate now uh, stage zero. Back to stage two. And then finally, I, victory. I've won the game. And then 
then back to stage two. So very musical transitions. Um, of course, the composer who wrote this music um, wrote it for interactive music. So if, you're, if you are dealing with composers, um, or you are a composer, it's, it takes a second to wrap your head around this because you, you, you're actually writing in sections and modules, but it's very, very powerful. And I think it it's, creates a much more um, uh, transparent musical score and much more, much more um, compelling as well. And just to recap, um, from a programmer standpoint, as you saw, uh, all the programmer needs to do is start the music system uh, and then change these musical switches or states and uh, all of the transitions will, be, will, be, will automatically happen as defined by the composer. Okay, so that's a quick look at WISE. Uh, again, as I mentioned, there's a lot of features and functionality. Please come see us if you, have, if you want to see anything in more detail. So Unity, let's start talking about that. Uh, that's why we're here. So um, we currently support uh, 10 platforms for our Unity integration. Um, the public platforms we support, uh, Android, Mac, iOS, Windows, and Linux. And we also have certified developer platforms, PS3, PS4, PS Vita, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Uh, additional platforms coming down, down the path. Um, if you want to access our Unity integrations, they're available for download on our website. Um, uh, we haven't made it available for the Unity Store, but that's something that we're working on to have available in the very near future, but you can access them from our website. What kind of functionality do we provide in our Unity integration? Um, we've done a lot of work on this over the last six months. Um, we've ex simplified extremely, if that word exists, simplified extremely, um, the installation process. So now it's a, it's a custom package that you can install and you can be playing audio in Unity within 30 seconds. So it's actually, I'll, I'll give you a quick example of that. Uh, using the picker, um, the WISE picker, basically it loads directly from the sound bank files of your WISE project. So you are able to uh, automatically populate all of the components directly from the WISE project automatically. So that's, that's actually very exciting and very, very, uh, very efficient. Uh, Unity components, so we, have, you, we provide you access for game objects, events, environments, uh, the states and the switch changes, and also loading and unloading of our sound banks. We also have some work coming in the future. Um, we're going to be making changes to how the um, attenuation editors are going, to be able, are going to be displayed in the Unity project, and uh, reference finders, uh, animation system integration, um, the system will automatically generate sound banks if they're not found, dynamic loading, and also making it easier to do uh, occlusion and obstruction. Excuse me. So what we'll do here is we'll actually do a real example where I will create a project from WISE. Not a very complicated one. It'll be something very simple. Uh, and then have that sound play in Unity to give you an idea of how all well this works. So, let's just load a new project. Actually, I have to change the version here. So this is an empty wise project. Well, actually, an almost empty wise project. So what we'll do is we'll just walk through some of the steps to show you what's involved. So in this case, um, I just want to play a simple music file, a stereo music file, in a, on a on a sphere uh, in Unity. So the process is is fairly straightforward. I drag and drop this wave file into the system. So what happened here was I created a sound object. So this is a sound effects object, so it has properties and behaviors. And also, in this case, I want it to be a looping sound, so it loops uh, forever. 
I could control things like volume and pitch and low pass if I wanted to. You might, <clears throat> you might recognize that sound. So I could do low, I could do pitch changes, low passes. I'll just undo those changes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just take this file and create an event that will play this file. So I click on the event tab here. I create a new event, which is a play. So you'll see, we'll call it play music. So I've double clicked on the event. So an event, as I mentioned earlier, it has an action and an object. So if you look at the list of available actions, um, you have transport type controls, play, stop, pause, mute, um, parameter controls, voices, uh, pitch, and so on. These are all the different types of things that you can control from an event. So let's just go and drag and drop my music into here. So now we have an event, and that event, when I play it, well, it'll play the music file. So that's all great. Um, now what we'll do is we'll go to my sound bank generation page, where I can actually, um, I've created a sound bank called music. So what a sound bank is, it's a binary file that contains uh, all of your media, so all of your, the, the, the metadata, uh, the events, and the actual audio files are stored within these files. And these get loaded by the game at runtime. So these are things that you can load and unload asynchronously um, as you need to. So let's just, drag, um, let's just drag that event into the sound bank. Generate that sound bank. So here we're actually creating the, that, that binary flat file. So that's all done. So now if we go into Unity and create, uh, actually, we'll, we'll load the WISE integration. So this is a custom package. So here's a list of all the, the scripts that will be imported. So the Unity integration page appears, and since the Unity, um, there's a WISE project contained within this Unity project, I have the options of automatically in installing um, this project into this project, or this WISE project into this Unity project. So now you'll see that the system is automatically populated. So here's my wise picker, which is automatically populated from the system. And I notice that my event is not there. Interesting. This happened to me earlier today. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I just have to recreate that event. So I'll just redo that one step. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, oh, I know what happened. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. That's my fault. I didn't save the project before I did that. So make sure you save the project before you do that, or else you'll do what I just did. Sound bank. Play event. There we go. Okay, regenerate that bank. Re repopulate the picker. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be cooperating with me. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice that Unity is flashing here because it detected that something has changed in my, in my WISE project. And there we go. So now we have a working event and a working sound bank. So let's just create a very simple sphere. So in order to attach the sound bank and the event, before it was a, you know, it was a little bit more complicated, but now I can just simply drag and drop the WISE event. So you see the component appear here. 
automatically loading the, the event that I want to post and load the sound bank as well. So now I have my sound bank that loads. So I can press play and then we'll hear that music play. So it's not the most complicated Unity project, but the, the point here is to show you how easy it is to start uh, and posting events and loading banks and so on from, from within Unity. Okay. The first question probably on your mind now after seeing, you know, WISE is, how much is it? How much does it cost for me to use WISE? Well, I have some good news. Um, if you're working on non-commercial projects, um, WISE is free. If you're, if you're part of an, edu an academic educational institution and, and you want to use WISE as part of your curriculum for game, for game design or for anything, uh, WISE is free. It's also free if you want to do evaluations or prototypes. So if, if, you, if you're working on a game that hasn't been greenlit yet, or you just want to try ideas, WISE is free. And it, WISE is also free to, um, for our limited commercial license, which uh, is designed for small indies who create games that use less than 200 sounds. So that's, those are all free options if you qualify for those. Uh, if, you are, if you are not a small indie or you use more than 200 sounds, we do provide um, a commercial license which is tiered in three ways to match and meet the budget of your game. So this is probably a little bit small on the screen, but the way our license works is we have level A, B, and C. All of this information is available on our website. Um, so the first plot, if you are level A, which you can see here, it's, uh, if your production budget is less than $150,000 US, the, per the first platform of WISE will cost you $900, and each additional platform uh, is $900 as well. Uh, the, in the integrations are, we don't charge for, those are available at no cost. Uh, level B, which is a production budget up to $1.5 million, again, these are US dollars, uh, the first platform is 7,200. Each additional platform is 3,600. And level C, which is unlimited production budget. This is our AAA price. First platform is 18,000. And extra platforms are 12,000. And that also includes 12 months of support. If you are doing a project and you are level A or level B and you're not, you know, you're, you're not sure if you're going to go over the ceilings, just contact us. We're, we're very open to discuss and to find ways to help. Um, you know, we want you to use the product, so we're interested in finding ways to help, ways to make this work for you guys. We, all, we also have uh, DLC licensing, uh, support and maintenance as well, which is optional if you're in the level A or level B areas. I'm just going to check my time here. Uh, we're still doing very well. So at this point, um, I can either show other parts of WISE or we can jump into any questions uh, that you may have about the product or what you've seen. First, is, has there anybody here used WISE before? If you have, lift up, your, lift up your arm. If you've heard of WISE, there's the first question. Nakamura-san, you've heard of WISE. <laughs> So how, okay, so there's not very many people have heard of WISE. Okay, that's really good. That's great. Um, are there any, does anybody have any questions? Is there anything else you'd like to see? Because we do have a bit of time. You're not allowed to ask questions. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, again, I'm waiting for a microphone. As long as it's not about HTML5, I'll answer your question. <laughs> It is about HTML5. Go ahead. You can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> with um, uh, Unity going to HTML5, perhaps within six months to a year, do you have any solid plans for going to web audio? 
Um, that's a question that um, we've recently discussed. Um, we are looking at, with, with Martin, our CTO, um, solutions there. It's definitely a platform that's important to us. I can't, I can't give you any solid, inf solid dates or anything like that because it's something we're still looking at, but I think you will see us running on those platforms. I think it's important. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you more. We have lots of time for questions. There's somebody in the front. Somebody in the front. MIDI file이 지원된다고 하셨는데 그거에 대해서 좀 간략하게 설명을 해주실 수 있나? Yes. Uh, yes, that's a very good question. Um, this is a new feature. So the question was, um, can you elaborate a little bit more on your MIDI functionality? So what we decided, um, we actually worked with a, uh, a game developer, a large game developer, just to give you a bit of history on the MIDI functionality, um, a company called Ubisoft, which I'm sure you've heard of, who uh, worked on a game called Rocksmith in Rocksmith 2014. So a lot of the MIDI functionality that we implemented, we implemented uh, for their game. So what we've done is, in the, in the interactive music section, we've added the ability to load .mid files. So these are, these are MIDI files that contain uh, note information. So let me show you how that works. So this is a, d a demo project that was built for us. So here in the interactive music uh, segment, um, let me just pull this up. So we've actually combined MIDI files, so these are the .mid files, and live WAV files. So what, and, and, and effectively what we're doing here is we're taking, uh, what's a good example here, this wood sensula. Um, and what you're doing is on the MIDI tab, you're defining which object in the hierarchy will play, or what's the sort of the... Um, the recipient of the MIDI information, if you want to look at it that way. So what these guys did is they actually went through and created a wide range of, of samplers. Uh, let me give you a quick look at what they did. Whoops, I keep clicking on that. I'm not sure why I keep doing that. Um, interactive music. So if we go to the audio hierarchy, Kalimba. So they've actually gone and created samples. Of, of, you know, four different velocities, different notes. So, if we look at the wood sensula. So those are all the different samples that they created. So when you play this segment, the MIDI files will actually play the samples that are defined by using this key map editor here. So you're basically creating a sampler um, in the actor mixer hierarchy. So if I play this, you'll actually hear a combination of the uh, live sounds and the MIDI files. So here's the MIDI files playing with the samples. on. So that's how we've implemented it for now. Um, there's a lot of features that we see down the road. For, for example, the ability to, people have requested the ability to modify the, MIDI, the .mid files. Um, but we're really excited to be able to, to bring MIDI files to the interactive music structure. Um, I think it's going to uh, be very interesting to see what people can do. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, 
여기 기능이 있는 거 um, um, I'm not sure that might be uh, I'd have to look at the, the, the brochure in the brochure it says that I haven't seen that brochure so I th- it's in Korean yeah um, I'm not sure what the, what, the, what the reference is to scores but This is, this is the way the functionality exists, so it really is the, the ability to import the MIDI files and have them play an object in the hierarchy. So uh, I don't know, Gino, if the scores means a different translation or... I'm not, I'm not sure what, what the reference is to scores, but that's, that's, that's the implementation of how it's done. I think we're just going to change microphones. Yeah, 마지막으로 하나만 묻겠는데 저기 yes 저기 샘플을 다 만드셨는데 저거를 뭐 사운드 폰트나 다른 그런 걸 이용해서 불러올 수 있는 게 있는지. Uh, not yet. Right now, we all, what you're doing is you're playing containers within the actor mixer hierarchy. So f- for now, it's WAV files. So those, all of the samples that you heard were imported as WAV files. But um, we, we will look and see, because um, it's natural to have, to, you know, it's quite a task to go and create those samples. So we are looking at other ways of getting um, data into the system, but for now, with this implementation, the, initially it's only WAV files for now. Are there any other questions? <coughs> Super 그, 그걸 하려면 어떻게 해야, 해야 되는지 좀 궁금합니다. 네. Right. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do that. Uh, the easiest way is probably using um, the state mechanism in WISE. Um, so you could have a character walking on the ground, which would have a certain state. Um, character is flying in the air, and you can transition from one state to the other. So you could, you could do something like a three-second transition. Um, actually, I can play you an example. Um, so what a state is, is it controls things like volumes, pitches, low pass, and high pass. So um, the classic example is um, <clears throat> a mode per- perhaps where you're flying or you're on the ground and you change those things. So you could have music that's not playing, and as you appear, if you go into the state, flying state, then all of a sudden you start hearing flying music. So that's, let me show you a quick example of, of that. If I can find it. s n o w b o a r d here we go. So by combining events and states, I can simulate exactly what you're talking about. So in this case, I have a snowboard that's, pl- that's flying through the air, or going down a hill, and then he jumps into the air. <laughs> so when I jump in the air, I actually change, I create a state called air, 
and it actually brings the low passes and volumes of, of the music down and plays wind blowing through the air. So this is a simulation. So that's, that's what I would do in, in that case. So pickups, you know, uh, you pick up a blue pill or a red pill, uh, that's, all, that's all states that are changing dynamically. Does that answer your question? Did I miss something there? Sorry. Okay. Is there any other questions? Hi, 안녕하세요. Good afternoon. 설명 잘 들었는데요. 그 그제 최근에 유니티 5에서 어 사운드 쪽 그러니까 리얼 타임 믹싱에 관련돼서 업데이트를 한다고 들었는데 어 지금 와이즈에서 제공하는 기능들하고 혹시 중복되는 건가요? That's a good question. Uh, it was somebody asked that question before Unity 5 um, which are revamped audio features. Um, and if the overlap. Um, I don't think there's overlap. Um, having a mixer, they're adding a mixer view and some other elements uh, is great because uh, you need to be able to monitor your levels and, and control things. Um, there's still a lot of additional functionality. Just the interactive music, for example, is one. Uh, all of our effects, um, all of the dynamic mixing functionality that's not, that you don't have to code and that you can have the audio behave and react. So there's still a lot, uh, I mean, it's great that, that Unity is, is updating their audio stuff, definitely. Um, but I think if you're, if you're still, if you're looking for, to take things to the next level, um, a tool like Wise still provides uh, functionality beyond what's available now. So it's still a good thing that they're doing their updates. Um, but if, you're, if you want to take things, you know, if you want to stream, uh, all of that stuff that you know you don't have to worry about it's it's something that you can take care of using a tool a tool like wise so okay i think that's it thank you very much for t for attending <laughs> <laughs>